Thank you for joining us. Among the many subjects we cover, one of the most important concerns is certainly our health. The RADFEST 2021 Conference on Health and Age Reversal just took place online with prominent scientists, doctors, and authors, and the following outstanding keynote presentation by Bill Falloon. Thank you for those kind words of introduction. I'm going to open up this prospect of human age reversal talk by letting the group know that the entire presentation, all the PowerPoints and hyperlinks are available at the agereversal.net website. And it gives you a chance to sit back and relax and not worry about scribbling down some information when you see something of interest because the hyperlinks and the slides will all be on the agereversal.net website. I'm going to talk today about research findings since last year's RADFEST, and there's been a lot of them, including what people can do right now to live five more years. I'm going to talk about a study that we're funding in which we're going to seek to repopulate bone marrow from old people with autologous-induced hematopoietic stem cells to reverse immune senescence and some transhumanist advances that have occurred over the last few months. For those who don't know me, I founded a group called Life Extension in 1977. In 1980, we started publishing a newsletter. We've since grown to the world's largest consumer-based anti-aging medical group. We send out a magazine every month to let our supporters know what they can do now to reduce their risk of degenerative illness, what they may be able to do to delay aging, and what they can do potentially to reverse certain aspects of pathological aging in their bodies. We have interviews with people like Dr. Church, who enlightens us on what he's doing to potentially enable indefinitely extended human lifespan. So just to review, in 1980, we started Anti-Aging News, changed the name to the Life Exchange Report in 1986. By 1994, we had so much information available, we converted to a magazine. And last month, we sent out over 400,000 copies to people who are very interested in reading about what they can do to live longer. Now, our controversial contention is that it may be possible to reverse aging in people today. And we say this based on a lot of evidence, including dozens of studies on parabiosis research, where they circulate young blood into old animals on a continuous basis, and the old animals grow biologically younger. This research has been replicated many, many times, starting from the 1950s all the way up until recent times. This motivated me to do my own study. I wanted to see, does this really extend lifespan or quality of life? And the good news is we took a group of rats, about 60 human equivalent years, and we gave them intraperitoneal injections of yat, young rat plasma, young rat plasma every two weeks. And guess what? The rats receiving the young plasma every two weeks live longer, but more impressively, their quality of life was much longer. So the young plasma group, you can see with the solid black dots, and they lived longer and they lived healthier compared to the control group not receiving the young plasma. And sometimes, well, the picture really tells the story. And here you see the control group not receiving young plasma on the left. It's looking older. Its coat has lost its nice white color. It's heavier. And then the young plasma treatment a rat, and again, starting these at 60 human equivalent years, it looks younger and it behaved younger. Here's another picture where we have three of the treated rats. They look younger, and then the one without the young plasma, it looked older and it behaved older in the cage. So quality of life is a big thing. Again, another picture. On each side are young plasma treated rats. In the middle, one that didn't get the young plasma, it didn't live as long, and its quality of life was significantly reduced. One more picture, again, two of the treated rats on each side, the control rat in the middle, just looking older and not living as long. So here's an expanded description of this study. We intraperitoneally injected uh, the young plasma, young rat plasma, into 60-year-old human equivalent rats, and we saw an extension of lifespan, now a human equivalent uh, estimate of how much longer. Well, a 70-year-old human getting this treatment might live to be 77, as opposed to the control group. Very hard, though, to translate rat findings into human findings, but at least we saw survival improvements, but most impressively, a transient improvement in quality of life. And this is just a, a summary from the scientists who did this. This is, by the way, 
pre-publication research. It won't get published for a couple months. You're seeing it now as you're attending RADFEST. But young plasma seems to possess these revitalizing factors that can improve quality of life and moderately extend their lifespan also. Now this validates a lot of work that's been done, or I should use the word cooperates. We're cooperating what's been done in dozens of other studies, including one I reported on last year at RADFEST, in which young plasma fractions more than cut in half the epigenetic age of a group of mice. And this is moving forward into a potential new drug that could enable people to grow biologically younger, maybe cut their uh, epigenetic age in half, which would be incredible if that happened. So the big question is, what do we do now to transition these young plasma benefits into old humans? Remember, we can't continuously circulate young plasma into our bodies. It's rather inconvenient to go in every couple of weeks to get young plasma infusions. And it's not going to work as well as if we had the ability to produce young plasma in our bone marrow. And this is where most of our youth emanates from. In youth, our bone marrow produces huge numbers of mesenchymal and hematopoietic stem cells. It's releasing these stem cells into our blood 24-7. Around the clock, we're, we're literally, when it comes to hematopoietic stem cells, a thousand billion cells a day are produced and released, immune cells, red blood cells, platelets. We grow older, unfortunately, and it declines. Our stem cell function and stem cell numbers, they decline. And unfortunately, this is a problem with aging, and we're seeking to address that. But it's important to understand that the natural way of staying young is to maintain healthy bone marrow. And the incredible news is transcription factors are able to reprogram old cells into induced pluripotent stem cells that can theoretically regenerate our tissues forever. I'm going to talk a lot about transcription factors throughout this presentation. Just to give a short definition, these are proteins that turn on and off gene expression. Under favorable conditions, the transcription factors are controlling our genes, so we have pro-youth expression of our gene pattern as opposed to, unfortunately, the activation of the pro-aging factors. So transcription factors, very important element of what we're seeking to explain. And the Nobel Prize 2012 was awarded to two scientists who were able to identify four transcription factors that converted old somatic cells into pluripotent stem cells that can propagate indefinitely. They won the Nobel Prize for this work, and those four transcription factors are collectively called Yamanaka factors. And we're going to use this technology, we hope, in vivo to enable older people to grow biologically younger. But as it relates to our stem cells, most people think about the mesenchymal stem cells, very important for tissue maintenance and repair. But our hematopoietic stem cells, well, this is what's needed to produce our immune cells, our red blood cells, our platelets. And when we lose our hematopoietic stem cell production capability, we die. It's, it's needed to sustain life. So we're focusing in on research right now, and the good news is, in vivo, a study was done, published in 2017, showing if you take out old hematopoietic cells and then reprogram them using transcription factors to turn back on youthful gene expression patterns, guess what? you're able then to restore those old hematopoietic cells back into younger ones. They were able to transplant these back into old animals who then started to produce lots and lots of red blood cells, immune cells, platelets. They were able to prove in vivo this can work. This is a, a slide from this study showing how they did this. But what we want to do is translate this into the human model. And what I did last year is commissioned a review article with some prestigious scientists to evaluate all of the studies that have ever been done looking at cellular reprogramming using transcription factors to turn on beneficial genes and silence the ones that cause us to age prematurely. One of those studies showed that a six transcription factor cocktail was able to completely reverse the degenerative changes in old cells and fully rejuvenate these cells into youthful functionality. This stimulated interest in the scientific community. That was the purpose of funding this 
review where it got into, published in a major journal and people around the world could see we're on the verge of making a major breakthrough in vivo. Here's a little diagram of how we intend to induce aging reversal in people, elderly people who are not very healthy to begin with. What we're going to do is a skin punch of their somatic cells. We're going to remove these fibroblast cells from their skin, put them into a petri dish where they'll be dividing, and then we're going to add in these cellular reprogramming factors, the Yamanaka factors plus two additional ones, six-factor regenerative cocktail that will produce autologous induced pluripotent stem cells. And the good news about this is that these autologous cells are genetically similar or identical to the donor. That the elderly person who donated their old cells, we get their genetic profile, and then we reprogram those old cells into genetically identical induced pluripotent stem cells that we differentiate into tissue-specific stem cells that are then transplanted after purification back into the older recipient with the objective of inducing systemic age reversal. We feel by transplanting these induced autologous stem cells into the bone marrow, we're talking about hematopoietic and mesenchymal stem cells, we may be able to induce systemic biological age reversal. And here's how we intend to do it. Step one, we want to remove senescent cells from the bone marrow, get those out of the way, and then replace them with those induced autologous pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells to rebuild immunity and also use the transcription factors to make mesenchymal stem cells to induce systemic regeneration of all the tissues outside the bone marrow. And to give you an example of how well this can work, this is something I showed at RADFIST two years ago, and these were old mice that had young bone marrow transplants. And you look at the young mouse microglial cell on the left, its branches extend like a healthy tree. And unfortunately, when that mouse grows older, those branches shrivel, it becomes dysfunctional. And you take an old mouse and put in old bone marrow, nothing happens. But you take an old mouse and transplant young bone marrow into that old mouse, its microglial cells' synaptic branches extend again. They extend again and they regain functionality. So the brains of these mice are functioning better and their activity levels are improved. You look at the young mouse box on the upper left-hand box, it's gray, and you see the mice running around the cage, really healthy. But the older ones, of course, they're slowed down, just like old people. But you transplant young bone marrow into old mice, and they start running around the cage and behaving like young mice again. Now, we can't transplant young bone marrow into old people because of grass versus host. And that's why we have a different plan in order to use induced autologous pluripotent stem cells to accomplish the same objective. And there's lots of data substantiating that this can induce a regenerative effect. The study published in 2020 showed significant reductions in mortality with very simple procedures compared to what we plan to do. And this study published in May 2021 showed that uh, progeroid mice, if you just put in transcription factors in vivo, you increase their lifespan and improve structures throughout their body, improve maximum lifespan in certain groups. So the evidence continues to accumulate that using transcription factors and reprogram genes in our cells to start expressing themselves in more youthful mannerisms. This group is doing something really unique. You send them your mesenchymal stem cells and they differentiate them into tissue-specific progenitor cells to regenerate maybe a kidney, a liver, a heart. It's not functioning so well in your body. This group is doing work with autologous stem cell therapy to treat people with hematological malignancies such as leukemia, multiple myeloma. So we have research going on across the board, but it's not focused enough on aging. And that's why we plan to do a study in which we will take fibroblasts, skin punch uh, drawn fibroblasts, replicate those cells, and then reprogram those cells into autologous pluripotent stem cells, repopulate the bone marrow niche with both hematopoietic and mesenchymal stem cells. Remember, these autologous, so the genetic profile is identical or at least similar, and then 
put those back into that older person to reverse immune senescence and rejuvenate their tissues. So our schematic chart here of what we plan to do to reverse aging. We hope lots of scientists out there see what we're seeking to do and copy us. I only have a few scientific groups that I'm funding right now, but there's hundreds out there that can do this exact same research and perfect it so we can start making older people potentially grow younger very, very soon. Now I woke up to uh, Apple uh, hijacking my cell phone one Sunday morning with something I couldn't get off, and they were talking about science curing death. And I'm just going to play a few seconds of what they were talking about because they apparently knew I was interested in this and, and made me uh, listen to this whole presentation, but it's very fascinating. Can science cure death? It sure looks like it. Given the exponential advances in microprocessors and smartphones in his lifetime, he insists the biotech industry will figure out a solution by then. For this reason, Surayev, like any number of young, optimistic, tech-associated men, believes that if he takes the correct preventative steps now, he might well live forever. So what I'm going to do now is talk about what's transpired since last year's RadFest. It's quite a bit, by the way. And the billionaires continue to put big money into age reversal research. And they're not doing it just to make money. They don't want to die. And this is what's really fascinating. And the continued publication, the continuing publication of research in which old plasma proteins are removed and it rejuvenates neurological function. It's consistent. This was published in November 2020 in Gero Science. And this is something people are doing now. They're using uh, apheresis as a way to remove plasma proteins to uh, enable their brains to hopefully become more efficient. Tel Aviv University, November 2020, released the findings of a remarkable study in which they were able to use a very unique hyperbaric oxygen treatment to reverse aging. And the study was published in a journal, Aging, and it generated a lot of publicity. It talked about humans have found a way to reverse aging. This is fascinating, of course, and what they were able to do is use a unique hyperbaric protocol uh, to elongate telomeres 20%, remove some senescent immune cells, improve some immune markers, and the media proclaiming for the first time aging has been reversed, which is not really true. Greg Fahey demonstrated age reversal two years ago. That was announced at RADFEST, by the way. But then, nonetheless, the media really is picking up on this information, and it's great because it stimulates other people to figure out better ways to reverse aging. And what was interesting about this study is that the trial participants, they saw their telomeres elongate to where they had been 25 years earlier. This is really remarkable. And where you can get this therapy? Well, it's available in North Central Florida at the Aviv Clinic. Uh, it's the first one of its kind to offer this technology in the United States. And when we sent our news correspondent up there to see it, wow, the pictures that came back. This looks like something out of a science fiction movie. But what I'm going to do now is play a video so you can hear and see exactly what goes on inside these chambers. The clients come into the hyperbaric. We close the doors and increase the pressure to two atmospheres. And the clients will fluctuate wearing a mask, breathing in 100% oxygen for 20 minutes. Then they'll remove the mask for five minutes, and then they fluctuate that 20 on, five off for the two hour session. During the hyperbaric, we have these tablets here, and our neurocognitive team develop training programs around what we've seen in each client's cognitive ability. So they're not actually watching television. What they're doing is part of the process, actually. Correct. They're not watching Netflix or listening to music the whole time. We want to actively stimulate the areas of the brain that have shown decline or have shown deficits. So the cost to go to the Aviv clinics, a lot of money, $45,000. And for some people, it's a lot of time. This is a three month program, five days a week, two to three hours a day, where you undergo the hyperbaric chamber in a very comfortable position. You breathe in pure oxygen and you also get cognitive training assessments. So for those who have the time and the money, this looks interesting. Uh, another way, if you can't travel to the Aviv clinics, is you can go to a local hyperbaric chamber, and we priced it around, and to go in there five days a week for three straight months, 
um, and breathe in some pure oxygen, it'll cost you about $18,000. It doesn't give you everything they have to offer, but it's, at least it's more affordable, and you can do this where you live, wherever there are hyperbaric chambers available. But what we did is we interviewed the doctor overseeing this technology. Uh, that, that, that's me on a Zoom uh, broadcast uh, about a month and a half ago, and the doctor had some profound information to disclose. This, again, is pre-publication data. But they've done a new study where they've used a multi-pronged approach, including intermittent fasting, to achieve average telomere elongation of 40%. I'm going to play a brief uh, replay, a broadcast, of what this doctor told us, which we broadcast, by the way, on local TV on, on a program that we have in South Florida. So listen to what this doctor says. It's just absolutely fascinating. What we have over here, we have better results than the results we had in the clinical study. We have here prolongation of telomeres with an average of 40%, which is double the size that we had in, in the clinical study. Why? Because we are adding other intervention freely to the hyperbaric, then the effect is synergistically. So what he just told you corroborates what we've been talking about at RADFEST since the inception, and that is you have to optimize the fundamentals of good health, that's level one, before you move into experimental age reversal interventions. Because if you are fundamentally unhealthy to begin with, it may negate any benefits that we can enable you to obtain by experimenting with all kinds of therapies. So please stay healthy or get healthy today. Stay alive long enough until the time, well, when drugs like this become available. I'm again going in chronological order from last year's RADFest, just a couple months after RADFest, one drug used just a few times was able to restore cognitive function in aged mice. It was able to restore memory, it was able to prevent hearing loss, improve immune function. This is one drug, just a few doses, doing some miraculous work in these old mice. It's probably in the approval process now, which could take years, which is why we have to stay healthy now, waiting for these drugs to become available to save our life. And again, transcription factors. David Sinclair at Harvard did a fascinating study where they damaged the optic nerve uh, traumatically and they caused the mice to lose vision. And then they used just three transcription factors to regenerate the axons in the optic nerve to restore vision. So this is an in vivo, meaning an inanimal model of using transcription factors to repair something that enabled the mice to see again, restoring vision using transcription factors to repair the axons, which make up the optic nerve connecting our eye to our brain. Fascinating research. So the end of 2020, Fortune's Annual Investor's Guide. This is read by the titans of industry, big pharma, investors, philanthropists. This is what they look at. And what it talked about is the most exciting opportunity to improve the health of the world is to understand the biology of aging. They talked about what you've learned at RADFEST over the last couple of years about various age reversal interventions. And they talked about that if we fail to develop treatments to reverse biological aging, we're in for a healthcare cost tsunami. We're talking about Medicare and private insurance losing the money, going bankrupt, if we don't figure out a way to reverse aging in people today. And they talked about the need to launch an Operation Warp Speed against biological aging. This is fantastic. Well, we've been trying to do that for a long time. I've appeared in many, many national TV shows. I was talking there about metformin, deprinil, so many medications that used to be available first in Europe. That's not so much the case right now. A lot of new drugs become available in the U.S. first. But this study we reported on last year at RADFEST, and it talked about modulating just two signaling pathways and extending the C. elegans model of aging to the human equivalent of four to 500 years. Now, this generated a firestorm of beneficial publicity. It ignited a lot of interest in the research community. And all they did was modulate the insulin signaling and mTOR pathway in such a way to enable these C. elegans models 
to live the human equivalent of over 400 years. And this is the type of media coverage that generates the kind of interest that people want to see as it relates to where they're going to put their money. So the great news is we already have access to a lot of the technology that's working in the animal models. We can boost the AMPK. We can suppress excess mTOR. We can, well, of course, restore NAD, remove senescent cells. We've got the ability to do a lot of this on our own. It's not going to work as well as it did in the C. elegans model, but at least we can decelerate some of the pathological aging processes until CRISPR comes around to rescue us. So January 7th, 2021, Wall Street Journal reports on a study in which perjured mice, they got a simple CRISPR gene editing treatment and they live more than twice as long. And this study, if extrapolated on an optimistic basis to humans using combination CRISPR treatment, it could mean that this could enable people to live to be 160 years of age. It's really incredible. Now, a second study actually published the same day, uh, January 6th, both those studies were published January 6th, showed that targeting just one gene using CRISPR, this is the KAT7 cat gene, it's a significant driver of cell senescence. Just by targeting that with CRISPR, it extended lifespan in normal age mice, which is more significant to us than progeroid mice, extended lifespan 25%, and improved overall appearance and grip strength. And it's important to understand that mice and humans share about the same set of genes, though in, in different forms. And what that means is if this CRISPR therapy works as well in people as it did in normal age mice, we might be looking at 98 year average lifespans as opposed to the rather pathetic 77 years we're currently stuck with. So CRISPR is demonstrating continuous benefits as was predicted and the media is reporting on this, it's getting worldwide coverage which generates worldwide interest in funding and supporting different research projects. Now, the Financial Times, like the Wall Street Journal of the World, published out of London, and they talked about COVID being a disease of aging because, well, older people get it, die more often. And they talked about, though, anti-aging therapies that could prove as important in the 21st century as antibiotics were in the 20th. And if that's the case, if in this century, antibiotic type advances in the anti-aging field are developed, Wow, we're in for incredible healthy longevity, incredible. And they mentioned that the pandemic, COVID, has left people frightened by getting old. It's good news. It means people are going to put money into it. Life Extension Magazine brings you new discoveries in health and anti-aging. Our science-based research and supplements are so advanced, they're many years ahead of the medical mainstream with quality control standards that exceed FDA mandates. Life Extension has covered groundbreaking medical research for more than 35 years. For your health and future, you deserve the best. Learn more at lifeextension.com. This concludes our special report on the Conference on Human Age Reversal. I'm Maya Brandt, and thank you for being with us. <laughs>